In this Java 101 class, we're going to be going over the very basics. And what we're going to be talking about is basic compiling and running of your Java applications. And what does the class path mean? And is there a better way? All right, let's get started. So what we're going to do is create a very simple Java application um, to start off with. And what we're going to what we're going to do is just create a, a new file here. And I'm not going to use any editors. I'm just going to create a very simple hello world. And then we're going to compile it and run it without an IDE or without a build tool and see how this works. Now, bear with me because I haven't done this in my day to day life for well over 15 years, probably closer to 18 years. Uh, due to build tools and, and everything else. But I thought it was relevant to give a give an idea to maybe people who are newer to Java and the JVM, what is actually going on under the covers and why do we need some of the tools that we use in our, in our daily lives with these languages. So let's create an application here. We're just going to create an app.java. And um, we're not going to do anything special. We're just going to create a new class that has an entry point and pr prints uh, hello world. Here I'm using spaces instead of tabs, um, really for brevity. I, I'm curious what your thoughts are. You can go ahead and add them in the comments. And let me remember how to type without the assistance of my IDE. Does that look right? It looks right to me. So let's just see what we've got. Let's see if it will compile and how we compile. And uh, oops, there we go. It's the escape key on these Macintosh. I misclicked. So here we go. If we look, all we have is just an app.java file. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Java C program to compile it. So all we have to do is type app Java C app.java. And there's no errors, so it must have compiled. And what we'll see when we look here is that it created a dot class file. This is no, this is normal for um, Java and JVM languages to create the bytecode that is the the class file. And you can see it's relatively simple to just compile a Java class into uh, a Java file into a Java class. Now that said, we did the most basic thing possible. It gets a little more complicated when we start adding more classes, and then because Java you have to import packages and then we start talking about the class path. Well, what is the class path? It's it's really no different than your your shell path that you're using, but it's it has a little bit of special syntax that we use for Java so that the, when the Java runtime is executing, it knows where to find everything that it needs, essentially all of the class files that it's going to use to execute this application. Um, those can be in the form of just raw class files like we see here, or they can also be in the form of uh, packaged into jar files, Java archive files. Those are more typical for distribution, as you probably know. So let's look at what that looks like for the Java, because with Java, you can, a little different than some other languages, with Java, the class path can really point to any location, much like your shell path. It can, it can be all over the place. It doesn't have to be local to your... Um, your system or your, your, your local directory. Um, and this is interesting because it has enabled many applications in the past and even now to um, share common libraries and to allow for uh, not cluttering up local file systems all over the place like we might see with some other package management tools. Um, the class path just by default with Java allows for specifying the, these artifacts to come from any place really. But what we're going to see is that if we create, what we're going to do is go into IntelliJ and we're going to create a brand new Java project. I'm not going to create any special kinds of Java projects, just a generic Java project. And we're going to see what IntelliJ is doing for us. So here we go. Let's just create a Java project. We're going to use Java 1.8 for simplicity. Call it example. And here we are. What we find is, and actually let's look at it on the, the command line here. 
So what we can see is that it created a couple um, project files that are unique to IntelliJ here. And, and more importantly, is it created us a source directory. And if we look at the source directory, we're going to find that there's uh, nothing in that directory. Not yet. So let's go ahead and uh, copy. We can go ahead and copy our app.java that we had in the, uh, the previous example. Go ahead and put that in source, and let's let's go ahead and see what we have. So we certainly have the app.java, and um, IntelliJ understands what's going on. And interestingly enough, um, before we get into this, actually, let's go back to the class file that we had. We didn't run the application, did we? So what we have is uh, we compiled the application, we created the class file, and in order to run it, all we have to do is type Java app. And because by default, Java is looking in the local um, current directory for any class files, and it will execute on them. So all I need to do is tell it the name of the main class, the class that has the main method that we saw in our app.java file. So again, we just had the class main, and you'd notice when I said Java, I didn't specify app.class. That's not going to work. What we'd want to do is specify the name of the class file um, as it will find those classes within that class within the class files in the class path, if that makes sense. So again, there we can see that's how that works. Now, if we go into um, IntelliJ, where we have our new project that we've set up, with the same exact class file. Notice we don't have the dot class file living here. But if we wanted to run this, and we just use the help of IntelliJ to just run this application, since it's smart enough about Java, it's actually helping us. And it's performing that compile and that run of that class file for us. And actually, if we pay closer attention here, IntelliJ actually created an out directory with the class file. And why it created that directory structure is unique to IntelliJ. Um, because we just created a very simple Java project, it wasn't Maven or Gradle or any of the other um, build tool type of projects that you might use, IntelliJ has to make up some decisions to handle what's going to happen when it performs the Java C compile and when it performs the run. And this is just IntelliJ's way of separating your source from the class files. Because in our previous example, when we did it manually, you see that when we compiled the Java file, we ended up with the class file right next to it. Now, that works, but it might not be what you're looking for when you're trying to navigate your source code. You probably don't want it cluttered up with all of these output binary files. So what IntelliJ does is it does, you know, what we find to be more of a standard is to separate the compiled binaries away from the source. And in this case, it just chose an out directory with a production uh, subfolder, and it happens to have our project in name in here and the class. And when we perform the run, you can imagine it's has to do something a little bit different than what we did. In fact, even to get that class file where where it has it, it has to do something than, different than what we did. So in the example of what IntelliJ is actually doing is it's, let's go into this project and take a look. So I'm going to actually uh, remove the out directory so that we can recreate what happened. What's really going on here is we're, it's performing a Java C. Now, forgive me, I, I don't do this on a normal basis, but this is just so we can illustrate what the IDE is doing for us. What we have here is we just want to compile our source. However, it's not right where we're at anymore. So if we say Java C app.java, it's going to fail because it can't find the Java file anymore. So what we really need to do is perform a Java C and we can specify source star.java. This time it compiled the files. But if we take a look at the source directory, we're going to find that it put the class file right next to the source file again, which is not what we're looking for. And this is not what IntelliJ is doing. So to clean up after myself, let me go ahead and remove the source app.class. 
And let's perform the command more like what IntelliJ is doing for us or Eclipse or your favorite VS Code, whatever your favorite IDE might be for Java. Um, what it does is it specifies the source directory and where the Java files are, just like we saw. But now it has a, another command line flag to specify a different directory. In this case, what IntelliJ seems to have done is created an out production example. That's where it seemed to want to put the, the output. So if we perform that same command, which did not work, it must create the command, the directory first. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, this is not something I'm in practice of doing. Let's try again. Okay, it, it uh, went ahead and succeeded without fail. And if we go back to IntelliJ and take a look again, what we'll see is sure enough, now I have the app, the class file in the right place. And what we can, what with this command right here, we can see is that's really what IntelliJ has done for us. It knows where the source files are because it created a source directory, and it knows all the Java files are under there, and it knows it decided that it wants to put them into an out production example subdirectory. And so this command that we ran is more or less what IntelliJ is doing under the covers when it performs a build or a compile. Now, in order to run this code, it becomes different again. So in this case, what we have to, if we were going to run this like IntelliJ is doing, we would need to specify where the class path is. So now I'm not, the class path is not where I'm at because if I were to try to run the application like before, Java app, it doesn't know where that's at. It cannot find the class in the class path, the default class path. So what we're gonna wanna do is specify the class path, which is just simply dash class path. I'm gonna specify the path to where those class files are. So in this case, out production example, and then specify the class name. And now we get the application to run, just like it ran in IntelliJ. So those are really the basics of what it looks like to compile and to run and to specify the classes to, to go to some other directory other than your, you know, you want the build output away from, separate from your source files. This is really what's going on. This is what we used to have to do and what I had to do when I first started programming in Java 18 years ago. It's been a long time. Um, and since then, we've, we've had many tools come to help us, um, and we'll have future videos talking about those. But if you liked what you saw here, I would encourage you to click subscribe and uh, enjoy some of the new videos that we'll have coming up. Thank you.